Passover greetings to you all. Normally the streets of towns and cities across Spain are busy with Semana Santa processions and passion plays in these days of Holy Week. The centuries-old way of portraying publicly the story of our Lord's betrayal, suffering and death in vivid images, each with their own biblical theme, reflecting an incident or even just a line of text from Holy Scripture to meditate on. While some folk act out their devotions, others go shopping, busily preparing for family reunions, the celebration of spring and new life emerging associated with the Easter season, believers and unbelievers alike. For those who hail from north of the Alps, this religious activity that we see around us so often here is in contrast to the more secularised world we've got used to in our lifetimes up north. As the influence of post-Reformation and Enlightenment thinking and culture has simply pushed public observance of faith into the corner. North and South alike, however, witnessing, making the case for authentic Christian faith is more of a big challenge than ever before. And especially now, in this year of the coronavirus pandemic. No matter what your background, whether Protestant, Catholic, Evangelical, Anglican, Orthodox, Jewish or Muslim, nothing is the same for us in our observances this year. We're quarantined at home, most of us. And for some that means isolation without physical contact, all banned from meeting for worship and fellowship, except, thank God, that we can still speak and see each other online. It makes you realise how much of our life of faith rests on words we can read, hear or speak. Yet we also depend on the physicality of the sacraments, the water of baptism, bread and wine in Holy Communion, oil in healing, and simply greeting each other with a holy kiss in Christ's name. The fellowship cup of tea, what can beat it? Yet all these sacraments are now beyond reach. We only have our memories of them at the moment. Maybe that's for the first time in our lifetime's journey of faith. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Did we appreciate them adequately when we had easy access to them? And didn't feel too troubled in spirit if we missed out on them while travelling or having visitors or duties of care getting in the way of our religious celebrations? Now we have nothing. Nothing except God's word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away, said Jesus in Matthew 24, verse 35. Words in Greek I so vividly remember seeing on a, a, probably a 5th century fresco of a Christian basilica in Damascus which was eventually turned into a giant mosque. Those words mean as much for people of the Quran as they do for the people of the Holy Bible. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Are we starting, I wonder, to miss the things of faith we took for granted when they were always available to us in one form or another. What can we do now? Can we turn this misfortune of ours into a blessing? If we realise that longing is a deep 
spiritual state, just like trust, rooted in relationship with our unseen creator. O oh God, you are my God, for you I long, for you my soul is thirsting, like a dry, weary land where no water is, opens Psalm 63. Longing for God in this time of waiting helplessly, dependent on circumstances we cannot control, takes us deeper than longing for normal social and sacramental religious activity to return. There's a unique grace here, which we must open our hearts to at this time. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word do I trust. Psalm 130. From now on until Easter Day is the most special time of the whole Christian year. More special than Christmas in reality for what it gives us. Maundy Thursday makes the news because Queen Elizabeth as the United Kingdom Head of State, holds a special ceremony for pensioners to receive a charitable gift of arms each year. And she does this because she's the leading layperson of the Church of England, something she has taken seriously throughout her very long reign. I know and have worked with three British European Anglicans who have received the Queen's Maundy money. Now that ceremony usually makes the national news media, but this year it reaches the news because it's cancelled. On Monday Thursday in the morning, every diocese holds a service with the bishop blessing oils for healing use and consecrating, sorry, consecration ministries, especially ordination and blessing new churches. Using these holy oils, blessed by the bishop, is a symbol of unity in ministry to others at the heart of the church. And at this service, clergy and lay readers also rededicate themselves to God's calling. And then at dusk on Thursday, we recall Jesus' Last Supper when he gave us Holy Communion and foot washing, offering them to us as signs of his coming self-sacrifice as the suffering servant. Storytelling continues after the service ends, recalling through the vigil hours of darkness, Jesus' agony in Gethsemane, his betrayal, his arrest and interrogation and torture. Then from Friday dawn throughout the day we call Good Friday. We tell the story of Jesus' trial, condemnation, crucifixion, death and burial in painful detail. It's impossible to do justice to the whole story without reading through it in one or more of the four gospel narratives. Each story is embedded with quotes from Hebrew scripture, but the story isn't told simply through isolated biblical quotations, no matter how inspiring, insightful or relevant they may be. It's the power of the story itself and what is done to Jesus that makes disturbing reading pointing a finger squarely at sinful human beings like you and me, calling us all to repentance and faith in him who died for us on the cross. It is with good reason that we speak of walking in the way of the cross. Remember how feet represent the expression of the human will in action. What the head decides, the feet 
have to take you to. We must make a conscious choice, an act of will at this time of the way of the cross to take time to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest the painful details of our Lord's death for us. If it is truly to be a blessing for each of us in different ways. Holy Saturday is normally when churches get spring cleaned and decorated, ready to celebrate Easter. But not this year. From Friday evening through to sunset on Saturday, when the resurrection vigil until dawn begins, we wait in empty silence and stillness, with only our longing for God, our longing for everything to be all right again, our hunger and thirst for God's healing love and mercy to be renewed in us and in our world. Try not to make yourself busy with unnecessary tasks in this next few days. For this great Sabbath day, Holy Saturday in particular, is especially empty for us this year. It's the day Jesus rested in the tomb. And the day he is said to have proclaimed pardon and new life to the dead, in the abode of the dead. It's something we may find ourselves quite unable to imagine, and yet we are all destined to visit there one day. He who is with us always went there before us. And that was not the end of his story. It was just the end of the beginning. There is so much more to tell at this Passover time from death to life. May God bless you all as you take time to follow this journey through God's word and ponder in it over the coming three days of grace. O Saviour of the world, who by thy cross and precious death has redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. Amen.